2017, it's the Overdose Talk Show. All right. Hi, Vinny. Hey, Andrea. Thanks for introing the show for me. It's my pleasure. David Box. Hi, Vinny. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Why Good. does the echo only ever magically happen during that time of the show? I'll never understand. It's just the uh, the excitement yeah. and, uh, you know, the spirit of the show just taking the pure over. pure energy in the room. Right. Yeah. yeah. You can't not... You can't stop it from happening. Um, you can't not stop. Hey, let's get right down to business tonight. All right. Um, Dave, could you put up the website, please, on the screen? Uh, you'll see we're getting things updated, getting things uh, put together here. And um, if you don't want to use your data or whatever while you're listening to the show on your phone, uh, you can download episodes for free on the site here. You'll notice there's... For free? Uh, for For free. For now. Okay. It only cost you a little bit of time. Yeah, we we, <laughs> we will be uh, at, at one point attempting to sell subscriptions for a couple... Th- it'll just be a couple thousand a month, I would think. Mm-hmm. Um, that ought to a cover... A couple thousand yen. Ought to cover our overhead. It's looking pretty slick. Actually, if we paid David Box his day rate, that is how much we would probably <laughs> need to do this. From, um, our, from our three listeners. Right. <laughs> so... Uh, so yeah, we are review of the show The Ranch on Netflix. You'll see up there and uh, the band from YouTube making fun of gang stalking videos. You can download that or any of the regular episodes, and we'll fill in this gap very soon. <laughs> it's yeah, about that's thirty, not, that's only not only gap. about thirty missing there. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, we'll take care of that. But keep checking back. Um, the site will be changing and updating and blah blah blah. Now we're gonna take a trip. Uh, to the Southern Poverty Law Center hate map, as we are wont to do. As we are wont to do. From time to time on this show. Um, This is a good thing that you can do in your local area. Just uh, check out the Southern Poverty Law Center. Would love it if you would be afraid of all these things. Yeah. Right. We think it's fucking hilarious. I am afraid of all of them. So, yeah, we're taking a look look into these and just see what kind of threat they actually are. So today we're going to click on this one right here in Chicago, Illinois. All Eyes on Egypt bookstore. Notice Egypt. Egypt. E-G-I-P-T. Egypt me. This is a... (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Sorry, that took me a second. Um, This is the website for the All Eyes on Egypt bookstore. And as you'll notice, if you click around this thing, it is pretty much... It's it's pretty much it, it pretty much exists to sell the works of Dr. Malachi Z. York, which are apparently pretty hard to get anywhere else. You know, a lot of these like, uh, you know, new age people do it, or like I've seen like Tai Chi people that do it. So they'll sell like DVDs or books or something that you can only get at one place, and they're always ridiculously expensive and shit. But people right. that buy into this philosophy, some people have called it a cult. Man, this story gets really interesting. So here's the bookstore. Now this guy. Dr. Malachi Z. York. Are we sure it's not Malachi? I, I guess it could be Malachi. Malachi Z. York. Yeah. yeah. So he pretty much, he combined a bunch of different philosophies. Uh, let me go back to the site really quick here. Uh, Egyptian, ancient Egyptian mysticism, uh, Islam, uh, Christianity, Judaism, kind of kind of took from everywhere. A lot of extraterrestrial stuff, uh, you know, things like that. The and reason they're classified a hate group. Oh, they're, yeah, they're, they're, a hate group. they're classified black separatists. Sure, Is yeah, that, that's yeah. what it says. I think, okay. yeah, uh, black nationalists. He he yeah. borrowed a lot of philosophy from other black nationalists and stuff like that. All right. Um, so I guess it's a hate group. Uh, seems hateful so far. Yeah, it seems like his fans. I heard you say Islam I at hate one him. point. Well, they I, uh... they, <laughs> they seem to hate white people quite a bit. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't know. This is uh but the the point of it is what are they going to do? Like this it's just hilarious that they they have I this entire map them. so you can keep an eye on all this completely ineffective <laughs> bullshit. Um here's this guy just to give you an idea. This should be back in the 90s. This is Dr. Malachi. This is Malachi right here. Yeah. 
Um, so I don't know. The audio kind of sucks. Whatever. Just yeah. to kind of give you, you know, he's got the more kind of thing going on. You know what I mean? He's got that goofy hat and everything. Yeah. Um, so taking a look into this guy and you'll see here on Wikipedia that uh, there's there's a little bit about him. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, York was convicted in 2004 of child molestation oh. and violations <laughs> of the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. Great. That's just the government trying to silence him, though. Yeah, that's yeah. not real. He had, he had way too much truth to be trusted. So, yeah, it was called his uh, his cult was the New Wabian Movement. Now, these guys went down to Georgia in the 90s. Uh, and you know who else went down to Georgia? I've heard tale that the devil himself may have. Oh my goodness! Yes, um, played a mean fiddle, didn't he? <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, they were probably down there to fucking root out the devil. So they go down to Putnam, <laughs> uh, Putnam County, Georgia, ta- uh, and start this town called Tama Ray. I guess you would, might say Tama, Tama, Tama Ra. Oh, no, I think that would be Ra in, in, in Egyptian Ra? stuff, isn't it? Tama Ra, Siken, Siken, whatever. Mm. Um. They built this whole like compound, basically a small town. Uh, pull up a picture of what it looked like. Oh, yeah. See, like here's some of it after it was abandoned, you know, and this is what it would have looked like from uh, a bird's eye uh, view. It's like a theme park. It's more like a hellish cult uh, patrolled. Supposedly, was this where they lived? This is where the cult moved to. All of his followers. That guy, it's Mal- like their compound, Malachi York. He took all his followers there. Supposedly, it was patrolled 24 hours a day by guys with uh, machine guns and shit, or I don't know, you know, at least whatever. Some kind of guns. Some kind of I'm some sure. kind of some kind Look, of semi-automatic a, guns. At a least a sign you can see from even this far away. It says, "Welcome to the Holy Land." Right. Ugh. Yeah. So <laughs> nobody like like there's been a lot of these over the years. You know, some are more yeah. famous than others. Scientology might be the most obvious comparison. Or Jonestown. I was sure. going to say this reminds me of the. Uh, the place that Scientology has, what's the what are, whatever their world headquarters is. Oh yeah, the weird place in California or whatever. Yeah, yeah I forget. Yeah, um, but they have all these pyramids. Sea Org or something. Here? That's Sea yeah. Org. Sea Org is facility. one of the groups that you can join oh. as a youngster. Okay. Anyways, uh, yeah, this uh, this this was just this wild fucking thing they did where they built a bunch of pyramids. Everybody in the surrounding areas, you're talking about rural Georgia, and people were freaked out. They're like, what is well, yeah. this? Like black nationalists are building pyramids and these are these are like the guys that think this is like the we the we was kings the stuff that we've talked uh-huh. about, you know, and, and shit like that. Um, that's how people make fun of it at least. But these guys were like, yeah, like we were uh Egyptian royalty and blah blah blah, you know. And um and Moors were were the uh were the most sophisticated and conquerors of Europe and the most enlightened of their of their time and blah blah blah. So, you know, you've heard about things like that. If just they were kinda... royalty in Egypt, why would they leave Egypt? Well <laughs> See, the, it seems like they're trying to pull the wool over at, our eyes. The story I heard is that at a certain point the old Jews came a knocking. Oh, is that right? And yeah, and they kinda if you read into this stuff, it's pretty good. Yeah, so there is a story about like a, a tribe of one of the original tribes of Israel, kind of ruining the Pharaoh making process <laughs> forever for Egyptians because they like tried to torture the guys that knew it, the high priest that knew the the chants and the and the uh, ceremony. You know, they would only have two guys that knew it, mm-hmm. and they killed both of them and ruined Pharaohs forever. That's, <laughs> that's I did the, not know that's how that went down. Nah, that's what I heard. Well, yeah. Right. Um, look at that shit, man. That's, but yeah, I they would have love their to. Own I would little lo- sphinx. It looked like. Is that right? Yeah, they had all kinds of that shit. Yeah. Oh, the that inside. looks nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> they uh, I would love to go here, but unfortunately, the entire thing was demo- uh, demolished. What? Oh yeah, I was just say. completely razed, and they uh, sold the government sold the land. They took all the land because. You know, as happens with most of these cults, it turns out that the whole thing was about molesting kids yeah. in the end. <laughs> I should say, I don't chalk it up to that one. Yeah, I don't know a ton about this, uh, but his followers are very adamant that he is not guilty, that he is innocent. Well, no, of right. course not. Yeah, he's serving a hundred and thirty-five year sentence. Well, that doesn't sound guilty. Um, yeah. I think they did have a, a court proceeding and everything. <laughs> there was, <you laughs> no, know. that's super classic. Remember, um, 
Warren Jeffs, who sure. got m- multiple life sentences for having his child brides at his fundamentalist church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, yeah, they had they had received many reports from members, I guess. And they were on a compound, was, too. I think that's a thing. Right. Well, that's what you do. That should be maybe a red flag. The that compound. should be right. <laughs> the heavily the heavily armed and guarded uh, compound is. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely something that you want to uh, probably to keep the bad guys from. out. Sure. Yeah. Right. Like just like our wall will be. Right. Just in Mexico. Say, yeah. Definitely won't be used to keep us in ever. Don't worry. Um, it's not how walls work. The new wabi. <laughs> <laughs> the new Wabian pyramids of Georgia. I just thought that was interesting, and that is one of our local hate groups. They're actually um, their base, their main base is in Brooklyn. They started in Brooklyn, right? Yeah. yeah. I wonder if but you can still here, go so. to the store and buy some of those books. Oh yeah, it's. Oh, I think it's open. Yeah, I it's found it on Google place. Maps. Oh, okay. Do you think they would let yeah. us in if we should we go? I there and bring some cameras and be like, hey, can just you see what? To talk about should what you we guys try blackface? Can you it's finally? An go there. Oh, finally! Yeah. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Um, yeah, the uh, see where it is All because right. depending on what neighborhood it is, I mm-hmm. think it's a pretty shady neighborhood. You think so? From from what I remember looking at it last week, which isn't a lot. Still, if we drive right to it and just go right inside, I'm sure we'll be fine. Yeah, you know, um, that's a secret. Like a lot of people are really afraid of like bad neighborhoods but if you really have somewhere to go nothing ever happens you're fine just yeah. go right to your don't fucking walk around all stupid talking it's, shit it's but. at 7851 south ridgeland okay i don't know what i think we're allowed there are we yeah i think we are um how can you tell google um, maps doesn't have that denoted i don't know that, <laughs> white people allowed <laughs> i know well and remember those people that tried to start that app that yeah. would warn you of like if you're traveling and you're pulling off the highway into a high crime area and then high crime. Right. Well, that's what they did. That's how they formulated the app is they used crime statistics, you uh-huh. know, and and uh, so so that you didn't just unknowingly kind of just go somewhere where you weren't welcome. Uh, but basically it was a code for like keep white people safe on the road. But. I don't know, dude. It's happening. I'm me. not um, sure which neighbor. This says South Shore, Avalon Park, and Stony Island Park, all kind of around where this is. Do we know any of those neighborhoods? Yeah, I think. Oh, I'm just picturing. I, I can picture where in the city that address is, and I think we'd be okay. All I right. think so. Um, well, let's go. Feel but, good. <laughs> That's all I needed. But those yeah. people, those people that made that app, they got sued and and all this stuff because it was discriminating against black neighborhoods. And they were like, "Well, we literally just use crime statistics. Right. That's that's all we did. We didn't purposely <laughs> make it so that it targeted black." And they were like, "Well, it's you know, it's uh, targeting uh, black businesses, and and now they're not gonna people aren't gonna be they're spending their money in, in black communities and stuff." And it's like, "Well, well, the black people will." Then maybe you shouldn't make white people feel so fucking unwelcome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> ever think of that? I don't know. <laughs> um yeah i mean so they got in trouble for that whole thing so you're not allowed to do that you're not allowed to uh put that on any apps and stuff like eh. but it is practical <laughs> you know there should be an app for every city you go to just the green zone like stay right. here people will tell you anyway. safe uh, so that's that right yeah that's know, um just a co- that's just a cool little story from the slpc hate map it's it's a pretty classic one yeah and then we this, we're just kind of making up for stuff that we were supposed to do last show at this point too one of these days we're going to use this map to discover a, a fucking weird hate group wait that was we'll that, actually be afraid of was that malachi Whoa. saying the hollow earth is a thing yeah i guess he's got Uh-oh. some hollow earth stuff involved oh too. boy see Uh-oh. when i first looked at this page i kind of was thinking you know we got a lot in con they wanted to talk about bigfoot and oh yeah it's cool stuff a lot of it yeah yeah I wonder if we could get somebody to talk to on the show from this place if we take it from this angle, the flat earth, the Saturn moon matrix, and hollow big, earth. Bigfoot, the hollow earth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, maybe. Do I you mean, think it'll matter that we're white if we have all these things in common? Yes. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, if you just look, because the Southern Poverty Law Center says so, maybe this is no, all smoke and mirrors. I mean, I looked in the comments on his video, and let's see. Some of them... <laughs> Uh, this guy's talking about somebody being all scared to talk to extraterrestrials. Uh, there, I did see. Let me see. 
the, uh, fuck, I don't know if I'm going to find it right now, but I saw some like white, white devil kind of stuff going on in here. Yeah. Um, in some of his videos. Whatever. Yeah, uh, it's, well, it's going you know, on. Just trust me. Not necessarily <laughs> inaccurate. But no, I mean, we might, we might be able to, uh, to call over there and see what's going on. But the guys in prison for 135 years. Well, yeah. someone must be running the place. They're someone still selling his books. There's yeah. a, there's a part on their that. webpage that where they're, uh, I don't know. I think they had a GoFundMe or something. Yeah, you can order all of these books on here too. There's where I forget where they are, but uh, media gallery. Um, yeah, you can you can get all kinds of shit on we here. We read a whole long thing from this guy about how he. Um, what was that weird well, thing he said a, about how he translated why, the Bible? It, it's why he came to this planet, and he said something about uh, how he translated the Quran without any bias at all in favor of of Islam. He said that in one sentence. Uh, without bias and in favor of Islam. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that sounds like sense. a bias yeah. to me, right? Call me crazy. I don't know, man. Um, There's a new kid who claims to be from Mars. He's in Russia. Did you see him? No. He's uh, grew up in Russia and has like this weird, unexplainable understanding of the universe and how like planets work and stuff. Okay. He might just be like a savant or something and has absorbed that stuff but he's displayed above average intelligence yeah this kid yeah uh for his entire life even starting from when he was like one year old and uh and he claims to be from mars and now scientists are like well how the fuck else are we supposed to explain it man is everyone just listening to some weird autistic kid that <laughs> fucking memorized a, a you know a couple of astronomy books and then <laughs> And then claimed he was from Mars. How old is um, he? He's not eight, nine. Why is this He's not young. loading? Yeah, whatever. Um, the Russian kid from Mars. Who cares, right? Do we want to look at this? I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Whatever. It's not coming up. Fuck that. Uh, let's keep moving here because we also said we were going to look. David Box. Once in a while, will bring us some old uh, PSAs or, oh, yeah. or videos to to look at um, that he thinks are entertaining. So let's. Let's see. What have you brought us today? What is this? Uh, Lesbians and gays of the 1950s? Oh, yeah. You got to watch out. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Is this a warning? Still? Or? This was from so long ago. What is this supposed to be? Some weird lesbian club? Yeah. I think so, yeah. This, don't you know what a lesbian club looks like? This is sure sinister. Yeah. Is this a what is this the purpose of this video? I think there's a narrator. Oh, here we go. Affinity brings these girls together in a famous Paris nightclub. So One they the deep rooted emotion. They got the gayest sounding guy ever to do the <laughs> fucking <laughs> the voiceover. Reformed. But remove them completely from the company of men, yet at the same time cause them to emulate the masculine appearance <laughs> with such pathetic results. <laughs> Holy shit. One is still aware of their underlying sadness. Yeah, they, they'd rather be so... at home, you know, raising kids and cleaning the dishes, waiting for the man to come home. Right, yeah, this doesn't look like it's any fun at all, hanging out, playing violins and smoking. Um, <laughs> Wearing a man suit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, why is this guy so mad at lesbians? Oh, wait, wait. Oh, oh shit. Oh, my God. He's not just mad at lesbians. Look at these fruitcakes. Oh, you want to talk sinister. <laughs> Look at this guy in the... Yeah, right there. <laughs> oh, my oh, goodness Lord. gracious. I don't think so. I don't think that's ever actually happened. Oh, my God. This is God. a weird fucking video. What... What Wait, is where's the, the narrator? Ugh. But while literature and tradition condone the weakness of woman, man receives only the heavy weight of ridicule. No matter how hard man tries to negate woman, she's forever present inside of him. The more he tries to deny her, the more womanish the she becomes. The fuck is this guy talking about? <laughs> yes, woman is apparent in hermits, eunuchs, the chaste, and more than ever, in them. That looks like Steve Carell. <laughs> That's fucking creepy. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Why is he so sweaty? <laughs> I don't know. But be afraid. Yeah. I, do. I don't know what this last part is about. They I, just have this guy. Well, what was any of this about? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Well, yeah, not wait, that there's anything on. wrong with that. Now, right. Hold on. Uh, 
what was the message there? Lesbians were okay, but gays should be. I guess upon? that it sounded like he was saying that men suffer more ridicule for being homosexuals, and that like you should rag on lesbians more. That's what, I, that's, that's what I got out of it. I cut, yeah. He said with, with such pathetic results. Yeah, I got that lesbians suck, and and then they're like not good at being Womanliness boys. is something that's always creeping up on men. Those some of those lesbians looked more manly than a lot of these kids they got walking around now. Yeah, some, of right. these, some of these millennials. We're millennials, actually. I think so. Did you know yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, I just found that out recently. Yeah, you're um, you're you could be zenial. I'm like right on the edge. You're on the cusp. What yeah. I think it goes back to eighty three. Well, they're, they're right. saying like 81 to 85 could be classified as zenial. Yeah, cause because we're not we're so the same. Between, yeah. yeah, we're not really yeah. the same. I feel like um, there should be a geographical thing involved in that conversation too because someone in like a really rural area is not going to be like the city people. In there's terms that of what's too, yeah. Or not, you know? <clears throat> also, you know, I think it more it more has to do with like what point of your life did you get to before you had cell phones and internet and everything? You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, if you were already driving and dating and working at jobs and stuff before you had internet, you're just a different kind of person. Right. You know, yeah. you just know it. There it was a different world, and you were formed in a. You're an anachronism, <laughs> and you're just a worthless pile of shit. Just not from the old days. Not from the new days. <laughs> Nobody wants us. I feel like having Facebook in high school would have made high school very different. Oh, dude, imagine how much we would have been arrested. Yeah. Like, all the time. All the time. Yeah. I mean, we the high school space, counselors probably fucking look at all the kids' Facebook pages now and shit. And I'm just, sure they do. I think Bill Miller was. I oh. think, you think he oh. was... Uh, oh. Yeah, he was uh, He was Scoping spending a, a good deal of time in the photo sections, I think. Um, let's, uh, <laughs> probably still is, too. Well, now that's all you can do. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyways, days passed. Sorry. Past. Sorry. Uh, I got your sound effects up in case you want to throw anything out there. Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> what is this next one that you have brought for us? Gay San Francisco, Ooh. as depicted by 1960s media. <laughs> Let's see. This is Gay San Francisco, <laughs> an inside look at the life of San Francisco's homosexuals. They numbered 90,000 at least, according to police department figures. 90,000? <laughs> police department Police figures. department figures. <laughs> Why? They were counting them back then, keeping Tracking track. the gays. Yeah, the terrible. gay agenda. People were uh, were concerned about that back then. Some people still are. Yeah. And only at night do they show their true colors. <laughs> I like the gays. Is this the music gay people listen to back then? Like, when did they start listening to like terrible, like keyboardy garbage? <laughs> you know, like yeah, this is good. This is good music for for gays. You know. Well, yeah, uh, I like this. Well, it's good music for anybody. Well, that's what I mean. But like in my lifetime, gay people have just always listened to like <laughs> the trashiest electronic music available that's true. and shit. It's like, and eh, not all of them. Okay, no, not every all of, single all of one. Them. Just uh ground of the always visible segment of the city's homosexuals and transvestites. The drag mm. queens are here at Turk and Taylor. So frequent were the fights between screaming queens in the 2 to 3 a.m. <laughs> period that police, even in permissive San Francisco, had had enough and asked an all-night cafeteria to close by midnight. Oh my Whoa. goodness. <laughs> really Whoa. shook things up. Midnight, Whoa. Huh? Holy, Holy shit. shit. I really expected something a lot more dramatic yeah. <laughs> at the end of that whole thing. The police had had enough and started counting the gays. I mean, it's pretty wild to think, though, that there was these little places in the oh, that far back in the 50s where you could openly walk around as a uh, trans whatever it is now. Um, I don't think you say They're trans. Just that, that's offensive. Dude. You don't say transvestite at all anymore, here. right? No, that's a, considered <clears throat> offensive. I think that's right. like saying midget. You're deplorable. Yeah, it's like everybody knows you don't mean offense, but they'll just fucking tr- correct you anyways. Yeah, for, mm-hmm. you know, they'll take offense because right. it's a bad first impression. Yeah, um, transgender. Sure, but think about that. You know, back then, I mean, this is uh, in a lot of places probably dangerous to this day. In in maybe like small. Towns, rural, yeah, but rural this is places, San Francisco. This is, but it's the 50s. They were already taking over by then. The 60s. I don't know, man. It just is. I assume. It, it's kind of crazy to think, like, I don't know. Back then, I bet you really could get the shit beaten out of you, you know, for, well, yeah. for dressing as a woman. I would think, right? Seriously. I don't know. 
Is that a thing or no? I feel Maybe. like it, it used to be. be. Yeah. Know. Not in your own communities, though. Yeah. Not I mean, in my house. And you're, they're still men. Do you even think... if they're... I mean, these are cross-dressers they're showing here. They're not trans transgender people. Right, right. Um, I don't think they had the the advances in uh, surgery to do the sex no, changes they've back been in the do- 50s. They've been doing gender reassignment for a long time. Really? Have Maybe. They? Well, this is in the 60s again. Yeah, um, I don't know. Box. I wonder when I the first know. time Maybe. they did that, though. Tell me something worth knowing. So do you think there... W- I mean... I don't know, dude. I just picture like, you know, guys of the 50s and 60s just not being cool with this for the most part. Uh, the know? first yeah. male to female gender reassignment surgery in Germany, 1930. Whoa. Yeah, Jesus. totally. Was it a guy to a gal? Gal to a gal. Male to female. Male to female. Oh, so, guy, God. Guy Do we to have gal. pictures of <laughs> that? Guy to a gal. <laughs> yeah. um, what was the very first one like? What's that gash look like? Just a big old gash. Show us that gash. Yeah. <laughs> we want to see the gash. Send the gash along. Um, we'll find. We'll try to find a picture of that gash for everybody. I don't put know. Up on screen. I'm not going to find that, but okay. Just search. Oh, we have to. Yeah, just search 1930s gnarled gash. <laughs> they were actually going to transplant ovaries into... Wow, they had so some crazy ideas then. Yeah, baby. they maybe at one time thought that you could fully do it, where you could become like a, a fully, you know, uh, biological female, technically. Yeah. I wonder if they will be able to do that one day. Ah. Five surgeries, one penectomy, which is probably or penectomy. Well, in 1930s Germany, what, what was going on then? Right. Yeah, they never hear much. <laughs> 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 Never hear much about that era. I don't know what the politics was like. Yeah. <laughs> um, although it was uh, Hitler was was well on his way to being Time Man of the Year, I think. In uh, if because what was it thirty nine or something? Yeah, I think uh, so. So apparently he wasn't the genocidal maniac then. Not yet. But Things we should were really bubbling look up to nineteen thirties Germany. Was an animal somebody advocate. somebody should look into nineteen thirties Germany and just see if there's any lessons there. <laughs> um. Like 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 maybe tolerance is sometimes uh, a crutch, should we say? That's a really really lame attempt at a terrible killing Jews joke. Yeah, good job. Let's see. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Every great city of the world seems this to have like an area given over to what the is. fleshly mm-hmm. needs of men. In yeah, San it just gives you a it gives you a feeling of bodiness. <laughs> yeah, <you know? laughs> degradation and human misery. A marketplace for vice and human misery. <laughs> I love the way they they thought about this stuff too. Like, uh, what? That was harsh. Um, exposure. Greek and Guild pictorial. Oh, they had to disguise them as like so weightlifting magazines back yeah. then and shit. Yeah. Um, Manual. Oh God, deliver us. <laughs> I do love American. how they thought about this stuff, though. Like, like <laughs> this is just a hellhole, a pit of absolute misery. Like, there's no, yeah. there's no recognition of like people might be doing this. By choice, they they just right. all gone nuts, yeah. and it's they're the devil. Yeah, they're in this completely, you know, just this pit of uh, of despair constantly with just well, a bunch of explanation. syringes coming out of every every place on their arm, and you know, just getting be, screaming queens ripping each other's yeah. garments <laughs> off in the streets, ripping wigs <laughs> off and shit, just fighting over over <laughs> over men. I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. Until their until their brain reminds them how wonderful women are. Exactly. Because that's what the problem is. And that's what They've the previous forgotten. video taught us. Right. They'll which never I didn't be quite... able to ignore those womanly urges. The previous video <laughs> told us that women were part of men. Yeah. And that we couldn't escape them. We can't. Even no matter how. That video was no basically saying no matter how hard you try to be gay, you'll never be able to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you will, you'll always come crawling You'll always back. come back. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what they were saying. Yeah. I'm not Except sure. Except lesbians just need to be made fun of more often. Lesbians are just yeah. trash. They're pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Acor- according to that video. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. I guess oh, that was okay. the end of that. Whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Uh. All right, well, and I think that wasn't we got. Bad. I think we got something else from David Box here. What what else is this? Uh, uh, 
Oh, you want to explain this, this at oh all? My before God. We... Well, you know, I start my morning every day with Folgers and uh huh. I, you know, it's uh, he, he takes it really seriously. He takes it really seriously. It's a big deal. And Can I tell just, you guys something? What's that? I got this coffee called Chalk Full of Nuts. No, why That's would you do a thing I don't like know. that? I didn't buy it. Darcy bought it. Yeah, of course she did. But now I have it. That's yeah. what I mean. Okay. And and then on the side of the thing, it says, uh, like it has like a little graph, and it's like 1920s. We sold nuts. 1930s. We sold coffee and nuts. And then it said, like, today, we don't sell nuts, but we didn't want to change our name. Now we just sell coffee. It's like, this is like the lamest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> on it. Like, we know we have to explain to you why our name makes no sense. Yeah. But we like our name and we didn't feel like changing it just because we don't sell that product any longer. Is the coffee, um, like, nutty or is it just no, regular No, it coffee? has nothing to do with anything nuts. It's just regular coffee. That's incredibly misleading. I, we would never buy that because Steve again? doesn't like anything chalk, with flavor in it's it. It's called chock full of nuts. <laughs> chock full of nuts? Yes, I'm Is serious. there chocolate in it or nuts? Nothing. There's the name. <laughs> the name means nothing. Did you already ask that? Sorry, I don't yeah. know for a minute. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> anyways, whatever. I just wanted to tell you guys about that real All right. quick. Because All right, wonderful. It just struck me as bizarrely stupid. <laughs> oh, this is <laughs> one of my favorite coffee commercials. Oh yeah, this is so you for my favorite brand. This is you just put on your favorite commercials when you get home from work. Yeah, the, I mean, you don't, you don't? This is yeah. analogous for how seriously I take my morning coffee. Okay, gotcha. Let's see here. Papa Eddie solves a crime. This coffee is criminal. Honey, <laughs> you killed the petunias. Uh oh. Then you admit it. Your coffee really is murder. What is she supposed to? What is this lady doing to the coffee? <laughs> that's so, I mean, yeah. it's pretty much just a fucking you know hot water and and grounds. That's all you really have. Like it's the brand. It's yeah. it's she's it's, buying the shit coffee. Is that what it's like? A woman was was able to take pride in knowing the brands to buy. Is that I what guess, that was? Yeah, they don't have a lot going on. They really didn't. Those they, were the days. They have one fucking job. Pointy ass tit ladies yeah, back well, then too. Yeah, I was just like, noticing that too. Why they all wanted to look like that? Looks like a video game character <laughs> from Nintendo sixty four. Pop polygon tits. <laughs> yeah. But Eddie, my coffee, it's murder. It's either too bitter or too weak. Oh no. Try Folgers. Oh. Never bitter, never weak, always nice and rich. Because Folgers coffee is mountain grown. Mountain grown? <gasps> Like what is it? What, what does that, that mean? mean? <laughs> I've never, well, what's a mountain? Yeah. <laughs> Wait. What? Just look where mountain it goes. Mountain grown for richer flavor. <laughs> mountain is where the best coffee comes from. Well, what ethnicity right. is that guy? I was wondering that too. I don't know. <laughs> he sits you know there. The Wait, let's watch that again. <laughs> he just sits there and, and watches her pour it for him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like he's perfect. He's not doing anything. He's just he's like seething, yeah. expecting it to be bad. Just let's see here. Huh. You know it's a crime not to have delicious coffee like this all the time. We will now that I've discovered. Boy, this guy's a roller coaster. How would you like to live with him? <laughs> that's when you think he's angry again. Yeah. He's he complimenting doesn't... your coffee now. Yeah. Now that I've discovered the mountains. What the know. fuck was that? I don't know that? what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, that was yeah. what you looked like, too. Okay. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shut up, you dumb Fucking slut. Fucking women. Whatever, bitch. <laughs> Just keep making coffee and sucking dick, all right? <laughs> I don't need to know about your 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 fucking weird mountain shit or whatever you're talking about. Um. <laughs> they trying to make that a thing? What? The, the the hand signal. They thought everybody would be walking around doing that. Yeah. Like, do you want? Some oh, you guys drink your folders? Girl? Fuck yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck yeah! You uh, you come out in the morning and you see your neighbor like, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Um. <laughs> Mound grown for richer flavor. Mm-mm-mm. Brilliant. I got to tell you, the chock full of nuts coffee, not very good. Is it, well, is it at least mountain grown? We got it because it was insanely cheap, I'm pretty okay. sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good place to start. This is not, this is, this is grown in, in like the bottom of a, of a deep cavern or something. It's the opposite <laughs> of, of mountain grown. It's grown in, in just like a shit Valley grown. full of garbage and sh- you know yeah. in somewhere wow. in eastern Tennessee. It's green. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, it's local. Yeah, I think 
Um, is that all the uh, is that all the weird old videos you brought us for today? I think that's everything that I put in there. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll get back to that. Uh, yeah, those in, are pretty in the good. Coming shows. Oh, there's this guy. Oh, oh you brought us this too. What? Yeah. So yeah, we were gonna do this when we talked about net neutrality, um, but we can do it now. Sure. By the way. Everybody's fine. Nothing. Yeah. Ha- nothing happened. Things are well, so far. Exactly I know it's only same. been a few days. From what I understand, the stuff doesn't actually like go through, and everything isn't done being written until I think February. Oh, okay. Is that what I heard. No. I don't know. A later time than now. But again, like you were telling me, so many people you talked to didn't know, didn't have any idea that this wasn't on the books until 2015. Like people thought that this was somehow you know, a part of the, of the, the internet for Forever. as long as the internet's yeah. been around. Yeah. People thought like the government was protecting us from, I still don't fucking get it. What people are afraid of. I don't censorship, which is what sells these days. No. Since you know? what, right. Exactly. Yeah. Look how well cable TV's doing and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everybody wants to see fucking censored, uh, garbage with bias. That's what everyone's yeah. into now. Right. Yeah. Um, well, these companies are just going to do everything they can to make sure everybody fucking hates them. Yeah. That's right. the goal. That's what they want to do. Right. Well, of course, you know, like we talked about too, and not to get too back onto this topic, but, um, you know, there are some elements where there's like mafia, like sort of things going on and, and v- monopoly like things going on, but it usually leads back to local governments in some form or another. It's usually governments that are that are aiding and assisting and, and creating the conditions so that a monopoly is like the only practical thing for these companies in certain areas. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, anyways, whatever. What is this guy, the FCC chairman? Yeah, I don't know if this is a recent video. This might have been yeah, something. Yeah, this said uh, a few days ago. It was? Yeah. Oh, okay. I heard maybe it was older. Like it, the idea of removing net neutrality is when he released this. Okay, this when it first came out. uploaded a few days ago, but it could oh. be from an older video. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Um, Whatever. So what are we looking at here? Hi, I'm Ajit Pai. I'm the chairman of the FCC. Recently, there's been What's a quite a bit pie? of conversation about my plan. That sounds delicious. <laughs> plan to restore internet freedom. Here are just a few of the things you'll still be able to do on the internet after these Obama-era regulations are repealed. You can still gram your food. What is that? These aren't foods you're gramming. I don't really understand. Is that Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. We're old. <laughs> That's gramming food. Okay, so you'll be able to post a picture. So this guy was. You'll be able to post a picture. This guy was in support of repealing, I guess, right? Yeah. (laughs) Um, Still post photos. So he's basically just. You can still, but so far it's been you can still post a picture and you can still post a picture. Just two different things. Things that have nothing to do with like the broadband issues and shit like that. Like, because I know the one legitimate thing, like you were talking about, Dave. um, You know, why shouldn't somebody? that's using a shitload more of the service than the average person have to pay more than the average person for that. Why shouldn't know? they? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, 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 I guess I agree with that. People, somebody's fucking uh, gamers and, and whoever else and live streamers and stuff that are doing this constantly, you know, why should they pay the same yeah, bill? You know, maybe I'm misunderstanding the issue, but the, from maybe. the stuff that I hear, it's like you still you pay for the amount of electricity you use, the amount of water that you use, and I don't really understand why creating different plans for people with different needs is such a such a big deal. I don't know either. And uh, the <laughs> idea because they're censoring us. Right. I keep hearing that, like, oh, the, it, people are saying it's something about censorship. Like, you're going to be charged extra money to search on Google if you're using an ISP that obviously doesn't have a deal with Google. And because it, why would that internet service provider want to provide you with decent service? Right. Why would they ever want you to be happy? Why, yeah, why would they want you to hate them? And I'll just, like, look around at the way that media has changed, too. You know, like, it, it it's not going to go backwards. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It just wouldn't. Why the fuck would it? Look at the yeah. how fast things have advanced. And, <clears throat> you know, we've ta- we talk all the time about, like, when did the internet get really good? Mm, 2005 or something, maybe? Ish, yeah. And uh-huh. that was, like, when you could first stream a video easily and shit like that and whatever else. Um, but, you know, 
it, it really changed the entire fucking world really fast. And, and, and then itself, it changes all the time and, and enhances and it becomes easier to do. Th- look at what we do. We make a show, put it on here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we couldn't do this 10 years ago. No fucking way. No way. Um, well, 10 years ago, maybe, maybe. 10 years yeah. ago we could have, I guess. YouTube but is really what uh, the biggest change in that kind of stuff. Yeah. When okay. 13 years ago. All right. How's that? <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? Like, and this is all provided by the free market. This is because of the motivation to give people better, um, more customizable to their interests media, you know, yeah. and that's, that's what the free market gave us. And that neutrality didn't fucking do anything for us. No. All it did was stick the government's toes in where they didn't belong. Exactly. So this guy's dumb. Are we still looking? He does have a dog, it's, though. It's a shame because <laughs> there are good arguments against net neutrality, and he puts this fucking video out, and it's kind of like... Well, it sounds like he's arguing yes, against so net neutrality. I am he's so like, oh. offended by this Muslim Santa Claus right now. Who am I suing about this? <laughs> <laughs> this is bull. How do I explain this to my this children? This is a war on Christmas. Yeah. You don't know that he's Muslim. He's just That's brown. True. No, Dave, yes, I do. Could be a Hindu. Um, I, I, you're, I don't know. you're allowed I, to continue to like things you like is what this was. Yeah, basically, yeah. you're allowed to, and this guy, it's, for some reason, is allowed to be a fucking moron yeah, in this video. It's like a, a failed attempt at getting into the mind of the youth. It, is, like, it, yeah. I, it's, but it's really pandering. So he wasn't, yeah, it's really <clears throat> Isn't he saying, hey, uh, oh, he, he he's saying with net neutrality, you can still do all this stuff. No, he's saying when net neutrality is gone, you'll still be able to do all of these things. Yeah, so he's yeah. almost saying, like, relax, it's okay that it's gone. Right. Yeah, except he's not right. picking very good. He's I mean, doing a bad job. He does, the, uh, har- if this is a recent video, and this oops. is what's so hard to believe, he does a Harlem Shake thing, and it's like, that's... When, at the end? Yeah. Yeah. With a girl who... Al- that didn't happen. <laughs> You're yeah. a liar. No, it does happen. When? Uh, it's not uh, in this video, but it absolutely does happen. There's a girl dancing next to you who's from Pizzagate. Stop lying. I'm not oh. lying. <laughs> Where, what, uh... I don't know. We'll have to find a different video, but yeah, at whatever. the end of it, there's he's definitely doing a Harlem Shake thing, and in there, there's this girl. I, I forget who she is, but she's dancing with him, but... She also is a believer of the Pizzagate scandal. Ooh. And so there's a con- there's some weird connection there. People are discrediting her. I mean, like, look at this crazy broad. She believes in Pizzagate. She's discrediting the movement. Um, um, Anonymous found Ajit Pai's personal information and released it so that people could harass him about the repeal <laughs> of net neutrality. What? So what is Anonymous's position then? They right? want net neutrality? Like now you like the government? What? I think they just, I think people just shoot from the hip and don't understand what they're doing. That when you're in favor of net neutrality, you are being in very, favor of the government. Very pro regulating. Government. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which like doesn't seem consistent with the rest of their overall message. I don't know. Who knows about Anonymous anymore? Nothing. I mean, that could have been anyone, I guess, but like it's, they posted it from the official Anonymous page and like That's on the, the thing Anonymous is, How do you website. know what the fuck is going on with them? You right. Know? Um, They're hacktivating. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I, I, of all the things I've seen from Anonymous over the years, they'll make a cool video where you'll be like, Whoa, they're gonna go after this thing finally or that thing. What nothing ever happens. No, right. ever. They, they release a series of tweets. Right, yeah. <laughs> like I mean you're saying WikiLeaks is blowing them out of the water. WikiLeaks oh, fucking far. kicks their ass any any day, yeah. All yeah. the time, yeah. Yeah, with with actual results and verifiable <laughs> results, you know. Anonymous just is like the guy fox mask and a cryptic like we're coming for you, you know, and like, okay. You are will ya? pay. Run. Yeah, <laughs> are you? We are legion. Um, look at this. Okay. The Pentagon announces <laughs> first ever audit of the Department of Defense. What? Oh. Now this is weird, huh? Who said to do that? Well, Trump is getting the credit for it from some uh, news outlets, and in others, it's just the Pentagon. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. I love when they say, "Oh, they get so childish it's in this building. fucking country." Yeah. The Pentagon says the White House says you yeah. know it's like why does well, it like I, who fucking said it yeah. yeah somebody had to have at least written it on a piece of paper the defense department is starting a, it's uh the first agency-wide financial audit in its history ever the pentagon's news service is who says this uh, announcing the defense department formed 
Uh, the Department of Defense. I don't know. Why don't you look, check it out? Um, announcing that it's undertaking an immense task uh, that has, sorry, I can't fucking see, that has been sought, promised, and delayed for years. Uh, of the tally that is starting this week, Chief Pentagon spokesperson Dana W. White said it demonstrates our commitment to fiscal responsibility and maximizing the value of every taxpayer dollar that is entrusted to us. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Um, they, they were formed uh, August 10th, 1949. The Department then, of Defense was founded. Imagine. And the, they have never been audited. Yeah, and apparently it's, uh, it says they have $2.2 trillion in assets. And I think their budget... Last year was something like five hundred billion or oh. something. Where it says down here, um, five hundred five hundred ninety billion. billion. Oh my god! Oh my god! Last year. Oh yeah. Well, the Pentagon will be deploying twenty four hundred auditors. Sure. Yeah, and, and they're gonna they're gonna what? They're gonna come up with a report where everybody goes. Okay, and I think somebody, I forget where I was seeing this. I saw a couple places that supposedly there's $29 trillion missing is what prompted this. Uh, tight. And I think, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I think, <laughs> I think more is going to come out about that. I don't know if that's accurate or, or what, but that's what I've been seeing a few places. But like missing over how long? I don't know. I, I would have had to uh, actually... Listened. Clicked on the article. No, I did, but there wasn't there wasn't like an article about it. It was trying to get me to listen to a, like an interview. Yeah. yeah, and so whatever. Anyways, I'm just saying. things. Yeah. I have a mic and I'm saying things. Yeah, I know it. Um, well, where are they getting the money to pay these 2,400 auditors? Yeah, I know. Well, it is. It this so this is going to be a costly measure in there's itself. There's no way it won't be to even audit this is going to cost. And they're just going to come back <laughs> with, well, all this stuff was glass. They're just going to give us a report and they're going to be like, okay, well, it's gone. And then the, yeah. whole, <laughs> the, the whole country is just going to go, well, what? I mean, <laughs> what are we? We're supposed not surprised. To do? Yeah, we're not surprised. <laughs> you guys, you guys, you guys always do this shit. <laughs> it's like a, a, just a collective. What is money anyway? And, and a, co a collective sigh ring out across the yeah. land. <laughs> just a sigh of, of malcontent from a from a from a weary populace. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the Defense Department's lack of financial reckoning hasn't hurt its funding, of course. $700 billion for the department uh, last month, Congress approved. Some $100 billion more than last year's budget. My God. My God. Um, what did they... Can you even imagine that amount of money? I mean, obviously... Oh. I got. I understand. Like Some stuff is really expensive, you know? Weapons. Those weapons can't be cheap. Um, no. No. I bet the Pentagon is a pretty uh, pretty nifty building. <laughs> Never been there, <laughs> but I've heard tell that uh, yeah. Uh, well, and they had that missile strike uh, in two thousand one that they're still right. recovering from. Struck right, exactly. Right by a missile. Well, we know for sure that their their cameras aren't too. Yeah, uh, well, I think they had to have spent some money <laughs> Why, upgrading the cameras. I, lo I love that people still have the fucking blinders on about that, like. No, it, it was a plane that hit the Pentagon. Like, it so fucking obviously wasn't. How could it have been? And why would we not have seen video by now? Well, there is video. Really? <laughs> There's four frames that show a missile hitting yeah. the Pentagon. <laughs> How could there be anyone left that hasn't that hasn't clicked yet? You know, I know people didn't want to believe it for a while, but I, it just blows my fucking mind that there's anyone that, that still buys that. Like, that, that would... You really think in 2001... That there weren't better cameras. I mean, you, I've seen uh, the, the camera that was on my uh, Razor flip phone in 2001 was better than the cameras they had at the Pentagon. How about every single gas <laughs> station in the entire world has a better camera? Um, that, like uh, every single we're, person. Look at us right now. Yeah, every single person in Russia had a better camera on their dashboard. Right um. <laughs> to record to record all the fights that they are required to have after yeah. every fender bender. <laughs> There's, somebody slides a little bit in the snow, almost gets hit. It's time to fucking fight. It's Russia, baby. Yeah. Um. And it's uh. You know, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. Um. I saw a little mini documentary today about even a new thing that I never knew before about 9/11, mm. which uh, I have looked into extensively, uh -huh. where a man's son died in the lobby of uh the second tower i think um but all the eyewitnesses that he talked to and people who like knew his son because he worked there um who survived uh 
they all said that a bomb had gone off in the lobby before planes started hitting the building. Um, and even a news report, one of like the first reports made after the attacks where the guy uh, like right after the building had collapsed and they were talking about it. One of the news reporters said the FBI was going in the direction of a controlled demolition in conjunction with the plane crashes wow. that they were investigating a demolition at the time. And that was reported very like the day it happened, you're saying? or Yeah, very early. Yeah. I yeah. mean, a lot of people reported stuff like that. Right. And you could say, OK, it was confusion on the day, blah, blah, blah. But man, it was pretty fucking consistent. Yeah. You know, if it was all confusion, there were a lot of people confused who were in the immediate vicinity of the event. Yeah. You know, we so. went, you know, we went pretty far down the rabbit hole of there not being any planes present whatsoever. Yeah. And there having been missiles or other things. I never really thought that, that was a plausible idea. Did you? There are some uh, weird circumstantial things that really support that <clears throat> idea. I know there it is were strange some weird that things, it, but a lot of them didn't check out. But also, like, do you, do you know how much studying and learning you would have to do to know if some of those things were uh, were normal or you know what I mean? Like when right. you could see the nose come through the building you know that always looked very weird to me well and now um, that they think the reason for that was because that shot was taken from a helicopter i know the exact shot you're talking yeah. about and they explain that by saying that shot was taken by a helicopter and they when they um prepared the masking for that video of the plane hitting the tower they didn't take into account the fact that the helicopter was rotating very slightly and so the masking was off by just a little tiny bit, which is why you can see it come out the other side instead of disappearing into the building. Yeah, but are do you think that it's impossible that it, the nose of the plane could have made it through to the other side? Yes. Probably, right? Yeah. yeah. So if we're seeing that, that means something weird is going on. Right, but also isn't it possible that maybe, uh, maybe some debris, debris was that shaped like exactly it? Yeah. like it? Because yeah. that's possible too, totally. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. It definitely was not the nose of a physical plane coming out. Like there's just Couldn't 100% no way that that's... Those things are made out of styrofoam. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, that is, yeah. You know, it's, I mean, maybe not exactly styrofoam, but they're meant to <laughs> collapse. Just yeah, like a, you you're, the hood yeah. of your car is meant to collapse, it's meant to absorb shock. It couldn't penetrate a steel building and right. come out the other side. It's got the strength of popcorn. So. <laughs> right, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Or a thin wafer of some sort. Um, so, I mean, I've done a lot of delving into um, <clears throat> the various ideas of what may have happened that day, but bombs going off in the lobby before any planes hit the building was a new one. I didn't never heard that one before. In the, okay. the presence of, what is it, ther thermite? Ther thermite? Yeah. yeah. The chemical you or something that's used in controlled Nan demolitions. Nanothermite, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What well, about yeah. It? There's traces of it that's been found in pieces of debris and oh, everything. Yeah. And a like, couple times yeah. <clears throat> they've confirmed that. But the problem was, remember, people discounted because the debris samples were tested after they had been removed from the site. So it wasn't a controlled experiment right. where like, somebody could have added the thermite later <laughs> and then yeah. tested it. So Which makes sense. They could probably go over there and still find thermite and traces of and you tell the average person stuff like that and they just make fun of it like, yeah yeah sure right like, well and the other thing too and here's the thing that bothers okay. me the most about the pentagon is uh there was for people who think that was a fucking jetliner there was no fuel it didn't burn it didn't i mean the amount of fuel that's in those things either creates an enormous fireball no instead it just made a perfectly round puncture hole with no wings straight into the financial department of the yeah. pentagon um right after that there was another time that they were missing a shitload of money however much it was oh yeah, yeah. uh they had announced the day before two three point two two point three so that's trillion. what happened last yeah. time there was a public uh you know admission that the pentagon was out a ton of money you know they they said okay well nobody will remember this <laughs> we'll, annou we'll announce it today because we all know what's happening tomorrow. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I wonder what they'll do this time. Boy, oh boy. Uh, I think everybody. Uh, no, we're just, we don't care anymore. No. It's like, yeah, okay, you guys, we got it. You just take 29 trillion, fucking piss it away. and It's like everybody's too polarized as it is. All it's going to do is 
<laughs> they just took it and just started what you know okay take it start terrorist groups yeah, send just, guns to Mexico yeah. whatever I don't care we'll anymore. be dead just, soon yeah fuck it <laughs> we're done with you guys you're ridiculous that's that's enough um so yeah that's what I'm I'm looking forward to on that is that I will like to see the press conference though that will be good that'll be good yeah we'll keep an eye out for that just you know well uh hmm It'll be like that Simpsons <laughs> press conference when the uh, the NASA episode of the Simpsons when they went to space or whatever, and they said the the guy comes out and says some ridiculous like uh, it's gonna it's gonna cost eleven bagillion whatever. <laughs> yeah. They're like, sir, is that a made up number? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, let's go to a quick break, okay? All right. And we'll come back with a few more things before uh, David Box has to hit the hay. Back on the overdose in just a minute. I feel like we used to come back to this music a lot yeah. in the old days. Who's this? This is Themselves. I recognize it. Yeah, you can listen, check out Themselves if you want to be confused and scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was listening to them constantly for when we first started the show. Anyways, what, what else do we have uh, tonight? What do you guys want to do? The white people thing? Why white people need to be better? Well, yeah, I mean, we're terrible. This is also, this is a great, you'll notice, there's a lot of lessons to be learned from this article. Yeah. Um, clearly a very talented writer, Damon Young. This is one thing that you always want to make sure you have uh, repeating words in your headline. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's very catchy. White people need to be better people. Yeah. Um, yeah we- white people need to be better people. Yeah. I mean, that's everybody knows. That's how you read that. Uh, this is going to be talking about the last uh senate election there in alabama where judge uh, roy moore judge roy moore lost but apparently it needs to be pointed out here that most white people here 72 percent voted for Moore, 27 voted for jones uh that's the men white women 35 jones uh 63 percent more so as you can see it's pretty staggering yeah yeah and um you know this this of course means white people are trash. I saw this. Well, uh, yeah. I saw this shared by a white person, uh, mm. and their little uh, editorialization on the matter was so basically white people are still fucking garbage. Accurate. <laughs> was with white people these yep. days. Come on. You well, know? if you don't hate white people, you can't be cool. That's true. Uh. I so, used to do that when I'm I was You're so on the wrong sorry. side of history, man. Yeah, I did used to do that too when I was very young, you know, 18, 19. I thought that I would say that I hated white people and that would be like ironic. And, cause, but I did it more as like a joke, you know. Yeah. Um, cause at white that, people are the worst. At that time, there was still an inherent level of irony in a white person saying that. Right. <laughs> you know? Not anymore. Not anymore. Um, Times have changed. So let's check out this article. The vast and overwhelming majority of white people living in a state in the United States of America. Okay. This guy is such a bad writer. Oh, this is awesome. Start. Actually, you gave that the first part of that sentence more credit than it actually deserved because how you should have read it was the, the vast, vast, the, the overwhelming, overwhelming <laughs> <laughs> majority of white people living in a state in the United States of America. Just in case you Nothing were confused. Nothing clunky there, right? okay. Yeah. In 2017, voted Tuesday for an alleged serial pedophile, a sentient cauldron of microwaved racist lettuce. Yeah. Who okay. said, what? A sentient cauldron of microwaved racist lettuce. Yeah, what yeah. part of that is difficult to understand? Well, that might be the weakest attempt at being poetic that I've ever witnessed. I think that's when we're supposed to LOL. Yeah. Yeah, man. He's just an old fucking, this guy's an old microwave lettuce over here. <laughs> <laughs> fucking you know, <laughs> soft and soggy and not quite the right color. Sure, sure yeah. yeah. You're not sure why he's still there. You should have just thrown it out. You know, you do that with lettuce but sometimes. But instead you try to microwave oh, when it. When you microwave yeah. it, yeah. You just, after you microwave it especially, you just watch it wilting in the fridge. And I'm, I was like, like oh, actually, no, that's not right. And you still barely beat it in an election. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <sighs> We've done a lot of acid. Um, <laughs> out of his own wretched mouth. Okay, okay. all right. So he, so, so so who he said, said out, out of, of his own wretched mouth... 
that every amendment after the 10th wrecked the form of government that our forefathers intended. Not untrue. You know, the only yeah. part that's in quotes there is the form of government that our forefathers intended. Yeah, and that's true, too. Every 10th amendment. Um, every amendment after the 10th, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a no, shameless... <laughs> you said every 10th amendment. <laughs> a shameless Sorry. piece of shit who's so thoroughly creepy that he was allegedly... Banned from a mall. <gasps> a mall? Uh, seriously, how much of a shit heel must you be to get banned from Hot Topic and Auntie Anne's? God, why does every writer have to try to be so cute now? What happened to writing? I don't it's know. Just... Is shit heel the best they could do? I guess. Shit heel. What's a shit heel? Someone who steps in shit. Yeah, I mean, oh. it's it's like a fucking, you know, like a redneck kind of thing, I guess, right? Like a, you know, a stink shoe. Someone who like... It's fucking s- shit kickers. Step- Old fucking gross foot. Yeah. <laughs> they like intentionally step in shit, like, oh, I'm going to go look for some yeah. shit to step yeah, in. Yeah, there's nothing else to do. Uh-huh. Right. It's just boring out Check there. Check out this one. <laughs> of course, these, these white people needed black people to save themselves from themselves again. Uh... <laughs> like asking us, us again. again to transmute into bulletproof vests and dive into the path of their bullets while they played Russian roulette again. What, what is, is this he, guy doing? What are you talking <laughs> what the f- about? What's the picture? What am I supposed to be? Is the What's idea the that image black, I should have black people brain? died uh, voting against Roy Moore? Is that the idea? Yeah. Yeah, well, they were... To save white people? Again. Right. Again. <laughs> How they again. always do again. Yeah. How they <laughs> again. again always do. Again. Yeah. Our, from our, 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 save vests. ourselves from ourselves again, like they have done again and again. Right. But look, their vests weren't strong enough to save us white people and... In them, they black, black people, people yes. and they suffer from, many uh, casualties from Donald Trump. But apparently, we found some reinforced Kevlar in Alabama. Ooh, boy, Kevlar's uh, not so great, right? Yeah, I mean, isn't there better materials out there by now? There's I better think. bullets by be. now, yeah. yeah, right? That's what it is. Ooh, so <laughs> look out, Kevlar. So, please, everyone in America, thank the black people of Alabama and Ohio. Whoa, why did that just move on its own? Oh, it's. It doesn't want you to read the rest of it. Uh, Stop making fun of me. And Ohio and Texas and North Carolina and Pennsylvania and Florida and Georgia and Maryland and Virginia. I don't understand this reference. What happened in those places? Maybe they elected Democrats, I guess. I don't know. Uh, For being so damn bulletproof. I just feel like that was a poorly made point. And then join me in asking white people why they so desperately want to die. (laughs) Because life (laughs) is horrible. What the fuck does that mean? What the fuck, man? Were we going to, were white people going to die of Roy Moore won. I guess we were all just going well, because white people are his obvious targets. Right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're voting in our own self interest. Right. Sorry. Yeah. You would do it too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for being so damn bulletproof. And join me in asking white people why they so desperately want to die. This guy's a fucking retard. Damon well, yeah. Young is the editor in chief of VSB, whatever yeah. that is, and a columnist for GQ.com. He's working on a book of essays to be published by Echo. Uh, by Harper Harper Collins, Damon is busy. Uh, yeah, he's he's. Oh, you're busy working on two projects. He's yeah, he's busy with his very very poignant little word salads that yeah. he has thrown together here. What a well, fucking I idiot. mean the imagery of um them transmuting into bulletproof vests to save us from our own games of ourselves of Russian roulette again again because we want to die <laughs> because we want to die again again right um right man I, I, mean, I, I, I this might take the cake we have gone over a lot of poorly written articles on this show I don't remember any worse article than this I don't understand Do and it's not it's three paragraphs it's it, two and a half paragraphs is what it is. And one of the paragraphs is just a list of states, right. pretty much. <laughs> um, Again. Yeah, what a fucking moron, dude. God well, damn. Should we subscribe to him and keep reading his literature? Definitely, yeah. Yes. Can you, you just make another of that? Damon Young. Yeah, we're going to keep up with Damon Young because, boy, that was bewildering. Yeah, that... 
Wow. I, I do want to die. I, mean, I, don't even really, yeah. I don't even really want to address <laughs> the you. point. And, you know. No, there is no point. It doesn't fucking matter. There's the old point of like, well, why can everyone say it about white people? But like, do you have any idea what happened to you if you posted an article that was like why black people need to be better people? And it was all like the disparages and like uh, crime statistics and shit like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Like, well, look, man, they're clearly violent and blah, blah, blah. Like. Obviously, that would put you in a category of uh, white supremacists, you know. Right. But this is and still the twenty-seven percent of uh, black men and thirty-five percent of black women who are obviously excluded from that generalization would make a big fucking stink about it. Which general? What do you mean? Well, Sorry. if it was, if this was flipped around, I oh, mean, I obviously, twenty seven percent of men and thirty five percent of women did vote for Jones. Sure. And yeah. this article is still about why white people are terrible people. And it also presumes, like. You'd, I guess you would have to be a retard, uh, retard, a retard yeah. to think that one political party is going to like save us over the other one at this point. Well, so, I mean, this guy really is operating under the assumption that just like Republicans mean we're all going to die and Democrats mean prosperity. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess you'd have to be a moron to think that. Yeah. Here's uh, what keeps getting me. OK, so I feel like uh, there's some momentum building behind the impeach Trump thing. I feel like I'm seeing it a lot more um, and more serious attempts at making it happen than I have in the past couple of months. Mm. But do people that understand happened, how that works? That also happened. Obama's entire, <laughs> you know, uh, reign. There was well, always talk of impeaching him. There's always somebody trying it. You know, what do people think is going to I like when you impeach the president, all that happens is that the vice president becomes president. You're not kicking the whole party out and having a reelection. Sure. You're not automatically diverting all the power to your own party. Speaking You're of just that, getting the same fucking stooge with a different face. Have you noticed uh, that he has not been in the news like whatsoever since the election? Not Mike at all. Pence? Yeah. Yeah. The vice president. He's too yeah. busy diddling kids, probably. I mean, probably. I don't know. I'm not. I'm just saying. He's maybe. A creepy looking he's, guy. I mean, he's disappeared awfully good. But it just kind of occurred to me. Wow, like I have heard nothing about him. And maybe but that's, that's the do. idea. Yeah. Because if they think that Trump might actually get impeached, then he's still there to take over, and nobody. Yeah. And then everyone has to start from scratch. If everyone's working against Pence right now, too, then yeah, we can't risk making his image any worse than it is right, right. now. It's or give right. anyone any fuel for yeah when they want to impeach him eventually. That is kind of always what they do with the vice president, right? He's just kind of like a laughable sidekick at this point, right? Just, just... Well, I don't know. Dick Cheney was like a fucking Superman. Yeah, villain. that's true. Yeah, looking he, all uh, yeah. evil. He was like the like a the, the penguin master. who yeah. aged like 90 more years right yeah <laughs> gained 90 pounds yeah he was that's true he was up to some shady dealings shady well and doings. he had one of those like evil reptile faces too you just look at him and you're like no but then right. his daughter became a lesbian and he became a big softy oh yeah is that how that works i thought well i mean you mean his erection went away <laughs> <laughs> when he realized his daughter was a lesbian all right, nice try, Vinny. Uh, yeah, it was okay. Commissioner, let's go to this. Uh, commissioner suggests, or no, I want to do this one. It's Cook County here in Chicago. Uh, Cook County Commissioner Boykin asks uh, United Nations for help fighting Chicago violence. Should we look at this? That'll uh, work. Sure. I mean, flash. Ooh, that's, that's, <laughs> should really update right. some shit around here. Um, <laughs> Cutting edge. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's see. We'll just read. All Cook right. County Commissioner Richard Boykin headed to the United Nations in New York Thursday to ask for help fighting violence in Chicago. I'm hoping to appeal to the uh, the UN to appeal the UN to actually come to Chicago and meet with victims of violence and maybe even possibly help out in terms of peacekeeping efforts. I like how they just throw that in. Like, yeah, maybe possibly <laughs> this could involve armed troops. You know? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> like, no big deal. Boykin, peacekeeping uh, efforts. Though. Let's yeah. See. He I mean, went to New York City for a meeting with an Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations. It's a meeting that's been planned for more than a month, blah, 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 uh, it stems from disconcerting violence, numbers, everybody knows Chicago's gone nuts with uh, murder rates it's and stuff. out of control. Violence, which has felt particularly hard in many African-American communities. 600 people killed by gun violence already this year alone. Look at this, five killed, 11 wounded in Chicago this weekend. Well, was this yeah. racist, what we're saying? <laughs> no, just... It's Chicago. Facts don't care about your feelings. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, that's a catchy thing to say all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've had uh, 600 people killed, uh, 450 people shot, 80 people killed this year alone, but uh, more than my... 
Mayor's office says the call for UN peacekeepers is a political stunt. The police superintendent no. said it's a nice idea. Is it really? Is that a nice idea? But it's not the answer to Chicago's violence. Um, I appreciate the commissioner's energy and his anxiousness to help reduce the gun violence in Chicago. I really do commend that. But at the end of the day, the UN has no jurisdiction here. They really have no jurisdiction in this country. That's Ooh. comforting so, somewhat that? <laughs> to All hear right. somebody say that. Uh, Chicago <laughs> Police Superintendent Eddie Johnson, whoever he is, I guess he's got the right idea on the UN at least. He knows. Yeah. Um, other suggestions for helping Chicago police have included bringing in the National Guard, but that has been, too has been dismissed as a gimmick. Or not practical Woo! so maybe this isn't uh all that likely USA. but you know i think it is it is pretty insane that we have you know public officials advocating for this you know and going to the un and saying we we, we might need help in our city with your you know because everybody knows un peacekeeping missions don't involve any violence right no no, no, no. It, it's, it's called peacekeeping Vinny. oh look i do have Duh. something we can watch oh. ah the hell was that sorry Some kind that's of, chicago yeah <laughs> yeah shy rack push to bring them here good evening i'm rob johnson <laughs> 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 Erica to bring them here that's where i work wants to get is it really keepers to chicago to battle that building our i think so yeah problem. But it would be an unusual familiar. move. Consider this from a UN promotional video. Peacekeepers often operate in hostile environments where others cannot or will not go. CBS two political reporters. And what do they? Is that Rob Lowe? Our story. <laughs> what do they, they do there in those hostile environments? They peacekeep. They just yeah. They just. What is this fucking woman? Uh, What's happening? She looks like a marionette. I have no idea. Why is this split up into eight different screens when you oh. fucking pause it? That's weird. Across Sorry. the globe, from Syria to Sierra Leone. Now a Cook County commissioner is appealing for UN peacekeepers in Chicago's crime-ridden neighborhoods. I know that uh, there are those who <laughs> say that this is an admission that we can't yes, protect the people in the oh, city, yeah. but quite frankly, we haven't protected them. But one West Side Ooh. alderman whose ward is plagued by dumb. violence rejects the military analogy. Uh, yeah. This is not war. I mean, we may have, have some daunting statistics, but again, uh, military intervention is not the answer. Right. Alderman Irvin says it's an what economic is the answer, yeah. do we think? Yeah. I'm not saying it, military in intervention is the answer, but these people sure have a lot of ideas of what's not the answer. These are just people that need free food, free housing, free health care. Free guns. That'll fix everything. Free guns. They need... I mean, like we say, we say it over and over again, uh, possibly drug laws were repealed. Uh, you would probably see More about drug laws. Yeah, more drug laws. More gun laws. More, more cops. More drug laws. Um, but no, I mean, how much? How many of these murders in cities like Chicago would go away with without drug gangs? Most to, of them. Yeah, most of them, right? Yeah. Um, Remember a few months ago when um, some government officials left a car full of weapons idling in a neighborhood in Chicago and it went missing? you Do we, yeah. <laughs> just, Do we just even think there's any chance that was a mistake? No. I mean... <laughs> For crying out loud, Andrea. <laughs> you who? Yeah, I mean, I've heard that my entire life, guys would say, you know, that... You who? No, that, that the CIA just drops guns off in the ghetto, you know? Yeah, That's, literally. Yeah, I mean, literally stories of just, like, barrels of fucking guns being dropped off on corners by black vans and shit, you and know? And then they're going to the UN to find out why everybody's shooting each other. UN, come help us, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the CIA, it's a trap. The CIA destroyed our neighborhoods. We need the UN. No, we need the UN. Call NATO while you're at it. But yeah, I'm sure they really won't uh, get into that one that's in this report. Chicago's violence, jobs and investment. And Mayor Emanuel Jobs and investment is going to stop the violence. Technology and yeah. community policing well, yeah. is reducing Build a stadium. And in high crime areas so, like sorry. And For all of us that know what... Build a stadium so you get... 5,000, you know, some crazy whatever it's actually, you know, like stadium or it's casinos or 5, whatever. I mean, you, you get all these $10 an hour jobs. Well, you know, the kids that are joining these gangs are not going to be able to resist $10 an hour over selling drugs, you <laughs> no, know. You Who could? can't make $10 an hour selling Shit. drugs. That's, That's some, crazy. Some righteous bucks right there. Um, so, yeah, they'll have some program to create a bunch of shit jobs that can't compete with with selling drugs at all you yeah know? um so as much as i hate to see people you know people's uh drug sales go down you know if you did make it legal 
you wouldn't have this fucking issue. But That's true. In ju- investments, jobs. Yeah, jobs. Okay. Inglewood has stood for before. It's different. And it's the residents saying it. It's this not some social old. scientists okay. saying it. Tonight, yeah. after the meeting, Boykin said the assistant secretary Flatters. general told him one circumstance under which he might come to Chicago. There is a global study that the UN is working on <laughs> regarding your the UK jaw away. Fucking yeah, that's push a white your, guy. Push your jaw back, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's a white that, guy that's in That's the first head transplant that ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once that is published, he said that he'd be delighted to receive my invitation to come and to talk about the contents of that study. Now, according to Boykin, the assistant. What? Ooh. Sorry, we got to listen to that again. I, I I don't I'm not sure. Too, if I was so distracted my invitation by his to come. Yeah. And it's a residence. After the meeting, Boykin said what the creepy Chicago. way of talking though. There is a global study that the UN is working on regarding youth and violence. Once that is published, he said that he'd be delighted to receive my invitation to come and to talk about the contents of that study. Wait, wow. He's receiving your invitation? That's your invitation. Right. Why aren't yeah. you receiving it? <laughs> yeah. This is all mixed up. And he won't be delighted to receive it until after he's published a study. Sure. Yeah. I mean, so basically, I guess the idea is this is they're sort of testing the waters on this a tiny bit. What a creep that guy is, though. This fucking uh, Boykin fellow here. He uh, he really gives you he gives me an uneasy feel. Like, Can you imagine just being alone in a quiet room with him, just having to converse, you know, and he's Receive my invitation to come. Like, I don't want your talk invitation. About the contents of that <laughs> Please study. stay away from me. Now, according to Boykin, the assistant secretary general also said the U.S. mission at the U.N. could invite him to Chicago as well. But that is even more unlikely. And either possibility is a far cry from peacekeeping forces on Chicago streets. Nevertheless, Boykin insists that Chicago. You know, I already see dudes with machine guns at the train station. I like, Yeah, dude, you ever go... Sometimes when you get off the train in, at Union Station, there is, like, a terror fucking squad there and shit. Like, what the fuck is that? Like a riot police? No, they're... You, you're ser- you've seen that, right, David Box? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Homeland Security? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know, because I just think... I just see cops, and I usually have weed... And they have dogs a lot of the time, too. You've seen that, right? This is the cops standing seen, with the dogs, I see dogs like, all the as time. people are getting off yeah. the train and stuff. And I don't know. They've never... They sure are cute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Boy, do they look cuddly. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking maniac. No, they actually wolves. do. They, they look like they don't want to be there. They're kind of like... I don't know. They just look scary to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. they weed. Yeah. No, yeah, I know they're probably not there for weed or whatever, but still, I'm like, I, they've never, you know, obviously alerted on me or anything but i always like walk as far from them as possible yeah, like, yeah. Well, probably looking um, um, like amazingly suspicious <laughs> <Yeah>. you know <laughs> like uh, edging along the wall you know yeah no i'm scared the, of dogs <laughs> i'm allergic please yeah. stay away from me i really um, like cops i'm just scared of dogs yeah so i don't know I, I i don't know how likely that is to happen yeah probably pretty fucking unlikely you know i rode my bike like an idiot through the south side of Chicago one time on my way out of the city back home. I forget which neighborhood, but shit was getting pretty hairy. Really? Would anybody say anything to you? Yeah, a few dudes tried uh, stepping in front of my bike, and, you know, there were people throwing beer bottles and stuff, and there were, uh, it was a <laughs> really? lot of like, yo, let me get them bikes. No one's hurt. Whoops. It, it, was, it was me and one other dude, and we were like the only white people just like, huffing it trying to get the fuck out of there and you just figured like oh it'll be fun to ride home it'll be a far ride and stuff and yeah well we it started rode getting there. dark and you're like where are we oh no we rode there starting like really early in the morning okay and then on the ride back five between five and six p.m it was like totally different neighborhoods <laughs> yeah we were we were really dumb we were just trying to find the illinois prairie path to shoot all the way back to the suburbs and it was yeah, it was bad. But you, you found the honky's not welcome path. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, Just, nothing happened, but, I, you know, had it gotten dark, could have been bad news. Yeah, man. I mean, we've all had that experience of accidentally being in a black neighborhood and being uh, being informed in no uncertain terms that we are not welcome. Um, at least most of us, I think. I The only time that happened to me was when we were in New Orleans visiting you. Um, yeah. And we accidentally drove through one of the ghettos to get to a cool cemetery. 
and we didn't even realize it until later and we told you where we had been and you were like no. you can't go there yeah. <laughs> what are you doing go over there dude <laughs> You're a target. Yeah. Um, we were fine. Just goes to show you. No, you are fine. Most of the time. But look at him, you know, throwing, no, bo- throwing bottles at him. People yeah. stepping in front of his bikes, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I whatever. We could go on all day. Well, then do it. Okay. What else happened? <laughs> I, I don't remember. Nothing. I made it home. No, I don't want to go blur, on all day. This is a blur of anxiety and yeah. confusion. Yeah, really. What did I do to these people? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was one of the good ones. My family came here in the 30s. We never... Are you trying to explain it to them, you know? (laughs) Yeah. We never owned slaves. I'm sorry. I like black people. Jews, too. And then they would give David Box a little quiz, which he would fail miserably. Yeah. Imagine if you you had to get out of a black... Like, they were going to let you out safely as long as you answered, like, three questions about about black people. Yeah. I like and had a just, dorky helmet on and everything. I probably just looked so easy to mug. Oh yeah. yeah, you well, but you may have even looked so easy to mug that they thought it was a setup. You know, like yeah. you were some police sting. You know, part yeah. of, part of some hey, fucking knock this kid out and go to prison for ten years sting. <laughs> like, um, Andrea, what in the in the Christ is what up with this guy? Um, Stephen McDaniel. Stephen McDaniel, who was interviewed in 2011 uh, about his missing neighbor, Lauren Giddings, Mm -hmm. uh, on the news. And it came out not too long. uh, Let's see, about 10 months after this interview was recorded, he admitted to murdering her. Um, and had a, given this interview where he was pretending not to know. So anything. this is the murderer we're gonna see this here. This is the murderer. And this being, is short, oh man, this is like probably shortly after the murder, and now they're interviewing neighbors. Well, they had only just they hadn't even identified the body that they found at this point. So yeah. the girl was between being declared missing and being declared murdered. Oh, I see. So yeah. this is him talking to the local news. Yes. Um, Never sorry. trust a first name McFirst name. Yeah, that's true. Always bad. <laughs> right. No one's heard from her since. Did you see her hang out with anyone at the time, anything like that? I mean, no, no, no one has seen her since Saturday. I haven't seen anything. I mean, I've always hear noise outside, but it's- <laughs> he's uh, yeah, he's acting pretty suspicious, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I haven't seen no one. I never saw no one seen. No one's seen. No one does. I, if I'm blind, actually. I forgot. I, to mean, tell you. Yeah. I, I don't even know what she looks like. I mean, like, <laughs> no one's seen. Who? Her what are we talking I mean. about? <laughs> yeah. Where am I? I mean, no, no, no one has seen her <laughs> since Saturday. I haven't seen anything. I, mean, I always hear noise outside, I mean. but it's just people walking by, pretty much. Jesus. And you, uh, she just recently graduated from Mercer. Yeah. She and I were we were both JD students. Um, he is so fucking nervous in- right now. Yeah, uh-huh. I wonder if he's like he's so I'm ner- casual. Yeah, he's so nervous about what he did. He probably did this interview voluntarily just to try to make himself look casual somehow. Like yeah. he's just imploding. You know, well, if, like, I, I, if I tell him I don't want to do the interview, I <laughs> they might think I had <laughs> something to do with it. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't want to look secretive. <laughs> May. What kind of person was she? I mean, how did you, what did you see? I mean, she's as nice as can be. <laughs> Why do you keep doing that? I mean, I mean. <laughs> what a weird tick. Back in May. What kind of person was she? I mean, how did you, what did you see? I mean, she's as nice as can be. I mean, <laughs> very personable, very much a people person. Do you know anybody that, any enemies she might have had, somebody that might want to hurt her? No, I am Oh, you see how he we're, furrowed we don't his know where brow with that I mean, question? Oh, an enemy. The only thing oh, we can what? think is that maybe she... One of those body language or facial uh, expression people, you know, experts, this would have been obvious, I'm sure. Yeah, you know? they would have been like, what? arrest this man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the hell are you doing? I mean, he I obviously mean. did it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Went out running and someone snatched her. Because I mean, we went, at, <laughs> because we I mean. went, over, we went out running and someone <laughs> snatched her. I goes, I mean, we went at, we went over, one of her friends had a key, we went inside and tried to see if there was anything amiss, but, I mean, she had a door jam that was sitting right by it, so there was no sign that anyone broke in. Kill him with what details, that, man. I mean, door- Hold on a second, yeah. what is that that he just described? There was a door jam sitting right by it, so there were no signs that anyone broke in? 
There was a know. door jam. I don't know what he's talking about. Here that. are some oddly specific things about the inside of her house that I have no business knowing. <laughs> <Right? Yeah. laughs> and 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 he's like probably thinking to himself, like, don't tell him I was in her house. Don't tell him I was in her house. I mean, we, I mean, we went over there. Uh, yeah. I went inside. I, there was a door jam. I mean, oh. <laughs> when at, we went over, one of her friends had a key. We went inside and tried to see if there was anything a miss but I mean she had a door jam that was one. sitting right by it so there was no sign that anyone broke in I mean the door was locked when everyone got here the... I mean we, we just don't know where she is what about um, in the like the parking lot area I don't he's know if it's not a good liar I mean, we just don't know where she is especially <laughs> yeah, not me especially not me I didn't see her yeah. nobody saw her the body Oops. or whatever they recovered from there body um, had you heard it? Had you seen anything there? I thought I hit it so either? well. Yeah. I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. Dude, that is fucking chilling. Like he he just found out they found his his murder victim. All right, wait, no. And now though. he's trying to let's let's just see what the moment that he hears that again, real quick, because that's that's not fake. Um, su- like surprise, it doesn't see. He's like, what? You are like, gonna feel so stupid. Really? Oh, it's not the right body. Oh, it wasn't? <laughs> no, he dismembered the fuck out of her oh. and chopped her all apart. And the only thing they found was her torso. And it was in a dumpster at his apartment complex. So it's somewhere right around here while they're talking. Probably, Pro- yeah. Holy fuck. Oh, shit. Whatever they recovered from there. Um, Body? Had you heard anything? Had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? I, I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. You know what I mean? Like they took it's out bodies not already, or somehow. We don't person around. <laughs> so that's how we're trying to ask people if they know who lived there. Are you okay, sir? I, I think I need to sit down. Okay. Aim. He's wearing a billabong shirt. <laughs> yeah, this is tragic news. I mean, I didn't see one of those in a long time. Aine. Yeah, he's had it since high school. A billabong shirt. <laughs> um, what was the other one? Pacific Sun. Pacific Everyb- Sun. Yeah. yeah everybody Bat had. Sun. Yeah. Um. Oh, and uh, o- Ocean Pacific was another one. Oh, I think. That's Every, right. Yeah, everybody. Used I think to that's wear- a Walmart brand. Is it? Well, yeah. it probably is now. Yeah. But yeah, everybody was wearing all those like surf brands for a long <laughs> yeah. time. None of us <laughs> had cool. ever been to the ocean. <laughs> we we're all a bunch of fucking Illinois shitheads in a bunch of surf clothes for some reason. Yeah. Well, it was cool. Yeah, it was the style at the time. So anyway, yeah, this isn't his body that he's reacting to. He's pretending to be hearing that this girl is dead for the first time. Yeah. He's that thinking, oh, how thing, convenient. You know what? That is one thing I noticed in his uh, interview that he was really good at. He said is the whole time and not was. She is a really nice person. We all You've really like her. her. She is, you know, we don't know where she is. We mm-hmm. don't know, you know. And this there fucker was no already she chopped was. her up. I mean, yeah. I mean, where, I mean, where was this? Georgia, Macon, Georgia. Okay. Um, so anyway, eventually in April, he pled guilty to murdering her. Um, so is there more of this the to bar? watch? Or? Yeah, I <laughs> no one had seen her since Saturday because I we all just there's not a whole lot of interaction unless we're doing classes. Right. And she was doing the online version of it. You all so, studied together though. I no. Uh, we were in this this two different people that this two oh boy. companies that provide it. Captain provides it and Barbie provides it. I signed up with Barbie and I've been doing the details, lectures that they details, have in the yeah. She was doing the Kaplan online, so I hardly ever saw her. I mean, he went home after this too, like what the fuck did I just do? Yeah, like, I'm dead. Why I'm was dead, I talking dead, that much? Dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Was it the was it anything about you know him just being a, a nervous Nelly that led the police to him, or uh, did they find him because of some forensic evidence or something? They you found know? him. Uh, yeah, it was a combination of stuff. Um, okay, so he they found the torso in the dumpster. He was already, by the time he recorded this interview, he was already considered a person of interest by the police. Well, he's rather interesting, For but whatever I mean, how did he I become mean, a suspect? Say, <laughs> they didn't say why he was already considered that way before he recorded this, but he was. Um, Who had that bit about uh, the per- person of interest sounds like a compliment? Like, <laughs> oh, I, I think it was John Mulaney, how, if he was a person of interest to the police. <laughs> Moi? <laughs> Do go on. <laughs> 
<clears throat> anyway, sorry. So anyway, so he um, <clears throat> dismembered the body and uh, disposed of it in different pieces. And the only piece they were able to recover was the girl's torso, which is wrapped in plastic and in a dumpster outside of her apartment. Um, they were only able to recover that because they didn't have enough evidence to search the dumpster. Um, so they parked a police car in front of it so that you it couldn't be removed until, yeah, because I don't know, it was something about being private property. They needed a warrant to search the dumpster. Usually, usually, uh, refuse is not subject to any of that Fourth Amendment stuff. They, usually it's, uh, for some reason, they weren't allowed to, to go through it. Maybe it was the dumpster was enclosed somewhere. Might be the first time in my know. life I've ever said refuse. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. But I don't, yeah, usually, I mean, that's like a major cop tactic is they take the garbage of suspects and try to figure out shit about them and whatever. But you know? they uh, ended that's up weird. having to park a police car in such a way that it prevented the dumpster company from emptying that dumpster until they had permission to search it because it's on private property they can't or something go in the garbage? yeah i don't know it, the the details of that are not super clear okay but that's how they ended up finding the torso otherwise it would have been taken to the dump and never found pro- along with what they assume happened to her arms and legs and head and probably a lot of other bodies yeah <laughs> like, um, um so anyway so he was able to kill her uh because he had stolen a master key they had the same landlord um they lived in the same building or in adjacent buildings uh but he stole a master key from the landlord and was able to just let himself into her apartment Ugh. but um before he did about that the door jam before right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> before he did that he uh very very casually and normally put his camera on a big long fucking stick and held it up to her second story windows and recorded a spy video of her inside of her apartment and then uh, apparently put that so he was, put that away he was obsessed with her he was like stalking her and stuff <clears throat> yeah. yeah um I would see her like go out sorry. running, but uh, I mean, sorry. what time would you go out running? Listen to this guy stand. I, mean, yeah. I don't even know when. I, at night or morning? I, I saw her like midday a, a couple weeks ago. I mean, that was the last time I saw her was <laughs> coming back from the bar prep on the main He campus. already said that he saw her because Saturday. He's like, yeah, we no we none haven't of us have seen, seen her since Saturday. Saturday. We got moved over there for a week or two. But she normally would run. That was yeah. Oh, man. I mean, he thought she, that they were just asking for time. sound bites. And he's like, wow, they're actually doing journalism here. Right. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I mean, she, she had a group that she would go running with. I mean, I, I, I don't know anyone that would want to hurt her. She was as nice a person as there is. <laughs> yeah, this is not good because she's not even, they haven't even found out she's dead yet. And he's right. already like working this up, you know. Yeah. He uh, so they found her body, but weren't able to connect him to the crime until much later, when he was arrested on a burglary charge unrelated to this crime. Okay. And then, uh, based on that, I guess they were able to search his apartment, probably for more burgled goods or burgled goods related to that, whatever. Mm. Um, and they looked at his computer, and he had like a shitload of stuff from when he was stalking her and they were able to prove like he was trying to gather information about her. They looked at his camera and found like images and videos of her from the day she went missing. Um, and they said when the computer evidence started coming out, it just kept coming. Right. So they just found more and more stuff until they had enough to charge him and then he just confessed. Of course, yeah. yeah. But first he put on this lovely show. I mean, how do you... I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Was she moving soon? Did you know anything about her? Yeah, yeah. She she was going to be moving out uh, today. She was supposed to move out today because someone else was going to be moving into her apartment. <laughs> New law student. Pain. I mean, do you know if she was night work? They couldn't. They hadn't seen bit. her since Saturday. This goes what on is forever, right? Also, what's with this shot? Was. Why do they have him positioned so that the I wind is blowing his hair into his face? Right. Just, just some awkward shot of like the fucking electrical boxes and oh, shit. Man. Yeah, this is going on they, they, way longer than he wanted it to, too. Yeah, yeah look, this thing's twelve minutes long. Just We're not going to do the done. whole thing. They, yeah. went in, they had a key idiot. to her apartment, and they checked around, didn't see anything out of place. Yeah, he's I mean, pretty much the saying the same shit over and over. But yeah, that's now, fucking. After ten, that that's creepy. Night, that guy really doesn't. 
She. I don't know what this means, but he just doesn't look like a murderer to me either. He looks like a guy that you would smoke weed with and like think That's was how they get you. pretty tame, you know. Um, you are murdered. That guy would have got you. Yeah, I guess is that just white privilege, you know? You think you're not going to get murdered? No. I constantly I, think I'm going to get murdered. I, that this guy you doesn't look like a murderer? Uh, you know? Yeah, that's white privilege. Sure. Um, Stephen McDaniel down in Georgia. Holy shit. He looks unstable to me. Well, not yeah, in this interview, but I'm just he, saying, like his overall look isn't isn't very murdery. Well, yeah, I I'm not getting the mastermind planned murder guy mm-hmm. from him, but I am getting the psychopath, you know, obsessive compulsive, yeah, dismember person. a body yeah. kind of, yeah, like a guy who's not good at murder, you know. Yeah, he, like he, like he he just murders nervously too like everything he does is with yeah. the same he kind of demeanor. Yeah. I like, can't believe. Oh, ing. He, uh, <laughs> aing, aing, aing. <laughs> like um. murdering somebody is one thing, but then dismembering their body like takes it to a completely different level, yeah. you know, because now it's like it's commitment. It's calculated. It's strategic. It's yep. disgusting. It's physically demanding. It requires special tools. Well, if Forensic Files has taught us anything, actually. Which it has. It's that completely seemingly normal people will dismember a human being. <laughs> they, yeah, that's true. They will do it all the time. Uh, Forensic Files. I know we've mentioned it before, but what a great fucking show. And they never really say it overtly as a concept. But what you f- find out from watching it is is it only focuses on like small towns where crimes like this are so uh, jarring, you know? They where never happen. It's just, yeah, this has never happened. Nothing like this ever happened here. It's yeah. every single case is one of those. Where, yeah. And it's like some doctor fucking chops his wife up and, and stuff, and you're like, Jesus, man. Yeah, well, and they Holy do a fuck. good balance of like people killing people they know and then also like just random murderers picking yeah. a person to murder. So right. like no matter what, you're scared. Yeah. No matter which thing you're more scared of. It could be scared. anybody. What is so yeah. great about a small town murder? It just, everyone loves it. I don't know why. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, we had one, there was a murder-suicide in Downers Grove uh, seven years ago, maybe. Was there? Yeah. Uh, there was also oh, a kid. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, ma- that was a guy and his wife situation, right? And the, a kid, too. Their okay. child. Uh, it was right on the border of Downers Grove and Westmont. But uh, there was also a a student uh, from our high school who was there while me and I think he was your age, Dave. Um, But he ended up killing his father with a weed whacker. His dad was asleep on the couch and the guy brought a weed. He was like 20, I think, at the time. This was south of here, Lockport, maybe. Um, so wait, you he, said he went to school with you guys, or he, he went to North with us? Yeah, they must have mm-hmm. moved after that. But we, did you went remember to him? Or no? no, I didn't know him. But oh. he was, I, I could look up the name. Yeah, I remember the story with the weed whacker. But yeah. his dad was asleep on the couch, and his little brother was upstairs, and he brought the weed whacker inside and just fucking weed whacked the shit out of his dad and killed him. Holy just weed whacked his face and his neck until he was dead. God. Yeah, and then he, wait, how would you be able? to... I mean. That, that doesn't even sound possible. I feel like, like you have to tie him up and weed whack him. You'd be in, in weed the whacking throat. him for like forty minutes, you yeah. know, to like. That's got to be whatever happened is probably horrible. This says man beat dead to, dead to death with a uh, weed whacker. There ah! he is. Yep, there he is. What? And then he didn't even go to prison. He's in a remember? mental institution. Uh, no, I didn't associate with that yeah, guy. Yeah, obviously. Shesh <laughs> yeah. Yeah, shesh. Oh, it was shit. just in Woodridge. That's just one town south of. Downers Grove for anyone who's not from First degree here. murder charges for allegedly striking his father in the head multiple times with a weed trimmer. So yeah, he didn't weed whack him to death. Well, he used a weed whacker. Um, what is, a that, weird is that his weapon father of in that other yeah. picture there? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> I'd have killed that guy too. Yeah, that's his dad. <laughs> Inked up on the beach. What is this ad up, in the son? Of this article? That does not match. Should we hit the beach? Like, I am going to beat you to death with a fucking strange lawn instrument. Yeah, you're going down. Woodridge yes, police yes. respond at 3.07 a.m. A call from someone saying his brother had just killed their father. Oh, man. Yeah, that's one. There was a there was another one nearby here five, six years ago, too. Something a uh, girl came home from school and interrupted a burglary, and they killed her. I think that was in... Um, Indian Head Park or something like that. One of these other towns around here. They, uh, yeah, she came home and then 
Well, Dude, there it, was one where a was, girl came it, home and interrupted a burglary and they tried to kill her and she survived. Um, that might have been Woodridge too. No, we listen to, to Woodridge, dude. This yes. one was fucking creepy. Check this out. Oh. Uh, chilling messages to slain girl's parents recalled in murder trial. Because yeah. yeah, what the guy did. I wonder if it's in here. Uh, the day after his fourteen-year-old daughter was murdered, I think her name was Kelly Joy. Because uh, or Kelly, yeah, Kelly. Uh, there, there was a thing that these girls. Kelly O'Laughlin. There, there was uh, maybe it was a nickname or something. Because for fucking years after that, they put um. On the hot over the highway, you know the fence. Uh, how sometimes people put like paper cups and spell out a word. Yeah. And they had something like Kelly Joy and a bunch of hearts and stuff hmm. ar- around there. I I don't know. I think it was for this girl, but yeah. Yeah, I didn't even get to the fucking the 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 most despicable part of the whole thing. Well, killing is probably the worst part. That's pretty bad, yeah. uh, Yeah, the day after his 14 year old daughter was murdered inside his family's Indian Head Park home, John Laughlin called his daughter's voicemail i just wanted to hear her voice laughlin told jurors wednesday at the trial of uh john wilson jr who was charged with the murder blah 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 later in the day a series of cruel texts were sent to kelly's mother um the first text read what brenda love your pick uh she wanted me to tell you something before i killed her brenda laughlin said recalling yeah so he took her phone and was texting the mom from her phone, you know, just fucked up, taunting stuff. Oh my god! Um, so the mom was trying to get in touch with her and says, "What, Brenda? How fucking creepy!" About an hour later, another text came from Kelly's phone. She wanted me to tell you something before I killed her. Eh, Continue for another hour or so, and then the unknown tormentor told Brenda he thought he was in love with her, and then threatened to destroy the phone if she did not respond. Yeah. Prosecutors say Is that him. Yeah, I think that's him. Um, Prosecutors say that the phone helped lead them to Wilson, who had spent 17 of the previous 20 years in prison. Jesus fucking Christ. He was arrested near a CTA red line station on the south side after an intense manhunt. In his opening statement to the jury assistant states, uh, blah, blah, blah. blah. (laughs) Investigators began tracking the GPS signal for both Wilson's personal phone. Yeah, whatever. We get it. Um he no longer had the phone, but had his own, and was worried it would tie into the girl's murder. Yeah, of course. Of course, yeah. During the course of the conversation, <laughs> yo, he, I just killed this bitch. He said, uh, "I don't know." He called an individual from the Lagrange Police Department and asked them to come get his phone. What a psycho, dude! This guy is just all over the place. During the course of the conversation, he said something that showed he knew how bad his phone was for him. He said, "Come get my phone. It has everywhere I've been." Chose he was in Indian Head Park killing Kelly O'Laughlin. What is going on with this guy? Jesus Why Christ. Why? He called like a friend? I don't know. It said he said called someone. He called an individual from the LaGrange Police Department. This is a weird story. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. I don't know. Okay. Um. Yeah, it sounds like he could have gotten away with it. He did well, flee out a back was... window after killing the girl. He left behind a knit cap that contained DNA. Okay. Yeah. Which later linked Wilson to the crime. Yep. That was right. That was fucking right down the street from me. Gross. Yeah, I remember that it was very creepy, very sad. Yeah. Anyways, well, that's, that's a, good. Yeah, but other than that, <laughs> we don't have very many murders around here. Right. Yeah. There was uh, when I worked at Yorktown Mall, there was a girl who threw her baby in a garbage can, but the baby ended up being fine, and the girl definitely went to jail at least. Yeah. Well, I mean. I would she was someone so. the hostesses knew her. You know, the hostesses are always the young ones and they like went to high school with her. Oh really? Yeah. She um, just put her baby yeah, in I mean, the garbage. There is uh there is some creepy stuff that'll happen. Oh, dude. Maybe we'll do this in the future. There is a murder that happened in Willow Springs in the seventies that I don't even like to even <laughs> think about or talk about it. Like Which one? It was a it was a kid being murdered by some older kids. Uh, like an 11 year old being murdered by some teenagers and the details of the murder made me fucking sick to my stomach like for a week and I can handle a lot of you know fucked up stuff yeah usually as you know but like yeah the details of that one I don't even want to go maybe we'll prepare for it at some point always end up talking about murder I don't know but we should especially of kids I don't know dude it's just because they're so vulnerable yeah somebody's got to David Box how else are we going to stop all the murders? 
Yeah, either um, they're going to get murdered or diddled. That's what society has come to. No, but the details of this <clears throat> particular one, it, it just is will make your fucking skin crawl. Well, do we have to do it? Yeah, I think we will maybe next. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll do it on the Christmas show. No. no. <laughs> All right, we'll wait. We'll, we'll wait a couple more episodes. But yeah, we'll we'll dig that one up. Yuck. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so there is creepy stuff that happens around here. Yeah. Uh, creepiest thing that's going to happen for the rest of tonight, though, is, uh, you know, maybe a little uh, Grand Theft Auto or some uh, some horror movies for me because we're all done. What? Why this, you both look so confused? Because this is Benny Lava. Put the screen on. This is Benny Lava. What are you playing? Uh, it's themselves rapping for money. This is the video for Benny Lava, though. Yeah, this somebody set this. <laughs> this is one of my favorite internet things of all time. Ever. It's some Bollywood stuff, huh? Yeah. yeah. What a strange thing. It's outstanding. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. See you on Christmas show. I do. I do like this video but yeah okay everybody take care out there um be safe, be safe everyone make good decisions don't don't drink and drive uh what else uh don't don't do like really obvious drug deals in front of cops and for the love of god stop murdering children see you next time on the overdose it's almost incomprehensible that they can exist right now It was like a big rainbow, boom, it was coming up, boom, boom, and I was like, yeah, yeah. Hey, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Honestly, why are you trying to kill me, man? Get ready. Come on, you want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? They call me. Oh my god, he just ran in. Holy cannoli! It's my favorite talk show, Lee. The Overdose Talk Show!